So the question of whether or not you should be using TRPC, REST, or GraphQL to communicate between your client and your server is one that is borderline impossible to answer. There is no one size fits all. There are many apps where TRPC is the best idea, and there are many apps where REST is the best idea. Instead of just saying one is better than the others, I want to tell you where each one shines. So sort of break down the use cases that make the most sense for each one. So let's start with the newest one here, and that is TRPC. TRPC should be used under the following conditions. A, you're using TypeScript for both your front and back end. If you're using TypeScript for both your front and back end, TRPC works really well because you generate types on both your client and your server and they can communicate with each other very, very organically. The next thing is I would highly recommend that it's being done in some sort of mono repo. TRPC benefits greatly from the monorepo pattern and the Next.js app. If you imagine your Next.js app is this guy right here, and then we split it down the middle right here, and over here we have the client, and over here we have the server, and then this tiny little line is TRPC, it's a very small divide between the two because effectively what we're doing with TRPC, if we look at this little example on the use query, if we look at our backend code here, we just are defining a procedure. So we're defining hello to be t.procedure, and then we pass it an input, and then we define, okay, the output is going Going to be of a string. So we know we're inputting a string, outputting a string. And then if we go down to actually use this in our client, we're just doing trpc.hello.use query and we pass in the string and then at the end we're going to get and then in the end we're going to get a string out. So this is a really, really nice way of doing things. And this works incredibly in, in a mono repo or not necessarily even just a mono repo, but in a like a next app or something like that. Next.js is in my opinion, one of the best places to be using TRPC because you get that next server, you get that front end react and the two just work beautifully together. So you have an app that needs to do a lot of reading and writing and you can write the entire thing in Next.js, TRPC is probably a good fit and probably something that you should test out and at least try in your app. It'll probably make your client to server communication layer a lot easier. So if TRPC is for these sort of TypeScripts for these full TypeScript apps that just need to communicate from a prompt to a backend. Where do REST and GraphQL fit in? REST and GraphQL can fit into a similar niche because they're more agnostic to platform than TRPC is. TRPC only works between TypeScript clients versus GraphQL and REST can go between any language they want. You could send these, these are universal standards, but I think where my recommendation would be is it's sort of a scale thing. So REST is much less strictly defined than GraphQL is. And what I mean by that is GraphQL has a schema. The schema for GraphQL defines what your mutations are, what your queries are. That's effectively defining what can the client ask the server for and what does the server have to implement. So it creates these very rigid contracts. And the ideal way that you would use GraphQL is your front end team, your back end team, these two teams come together. They decide, okay, we're gonna do use this, this, and this. I want a route to get this thing and then to mutate this thing, so on and so forth. They shake hands and then they leave, implement these two things, come together, and then they just sock it together really nicely because you have this beautiful schema defined down the middle that can connect them up to each other. So to show you an example of this, we have like the query or whatever right here. So we're defining, we have a query of get dogs. And then in here, we're specifying on the dogs, we want to get their ID, we want to get their breed. Now, one of the really cool things about GraphQL is you define what you want to get from the server. So this is a really useful thing. Something that we're looking at for Insider Biz is because we send out a lot of data right now. If you think about it, we're doing financial data. So being able to limit to, I just want to get these four fields for this page instead of getting all 30 fields that we track for each document would be a huge, huge performance uptick and can really help with mobile devices and especially in more remote areas where you have to send down where you want to send as small of a payload as humanly possible. Right here, this dog's object could have more things on it, but here we're just getting the ID and the breed. And then to execute this, we could just use the use query hook or some other um, GraphQL client and execute that on the front end. And this does not have to be in TypeScript. This is in TypeScript because it's, you know, the Apollo is a GraphQL client for TypeScript, but there are other GraphQL clients for other languages and you can interface with it regardless of the language. And one of the best parts about this is your server can be written in basically anything you want. GraphQL, as I said, is language agnostic. So you can implement a gateway for whatever you want to do in whatever language you want and then send data back and forth really easily. So 
Saying all of this, it sounds like GraphQL is probably just the quote air winner. We get a strong schema, which we don't really get with REST. You can generate a sort of documentation page with Swagger, but you can't really define a strict schema on the front and back end that they have to adhere to. So you kind of just have to define, okay, here are all of our roots. Here's what they need to implement. You end up like documenting within Postman and doing some weird stuff. It's not the most ideal thing in the world. So it kind of feels like GraphQL just does everything better. You can limit your fields. It's better documented, better types, better contracts. Why would you ever use REST. And the main reason why is because setting up GraphQL is a lot of work. I can tell you from experience back in high school when I was doing one of my first real projects, I thought it would be a great idea to implement GraphQL. The only problem was I was the only dev on the project. So I was just writing it for myself and there was no real reason to be doing this. I was writing out this big complex Apollo server and then I was writing out this client and I was consuming the client over here. I was just duplicating code. I had to do all of this extra work to set up these schemas, to set up these mutations, to set up these queries, all this stuff. And there was just no point when they could have just been simple get and post requests because all they were really doing was just reading and writing out of a database. So there wasn't really a point to be setting up all of this GraphQL stuff because I think the point of GraphQL is to use it with a bigger team, generally. It's one of those things where REST is better when you have that simpler complexity where I just want to easily communicate from front to back end you know, so pretty easy. Um, so, and it's also, like I said, language agnostic. It's something that works across all languages. It's a, it's HTTP. That's a protocol that basically everything supports. So it doesn't really matter what language you write your front and back end in, they can communicate with each other. So yeah, hopefully that gives you a sort of idea. Um, in summary, it's basically TRPC. If you have a front and back end, both written in TypeScript that are tightly coupled together, ideally in like a Next.js app or a mono repo. GraphQL for when you have a bigger team of a front and back end who need to define how they talk to each other and then can just go off and implement their separate parts and bring them together where you don't want them to have to constantly back and forth with each other, which they will inevitably have to do if you do it in REST. And then finally, REST is going to be the simpler implementation. It's going to be something, it's not necessarily simpler because you there are a lot of APIs that are just pure REST and can go all the way up. Like you can scale REST as much as you want to. I'm not saying that REST doesn't scale, but I'm saying that GraphQL is built for team scaling versus REST is one of those things where it'll do the exact same thing, but it'll it's a lot quicker and easier to get up and running. Getting a get post, um, getting get post put and delete implemented is pretty quick compared to getting those mutations and all that stuff set up in GraphQL. It's a lot more boilerplate on the GraphQL side, so if you can avoid that, if you're in a small team, you're just by yourself, probably use REST. You don't probably don't need GraphQL at that point. And like I said, this is a hard comparison to make because fundamentally speaking, these all do accomplish the same task. They will all get your data from your client to your server. You don't fundamentally need they all can do the same thing. But hopefully this gives you a better understanding of where they sort of shine and why they shine in those places. So yeah.